Everybody, welcome to another edition of NASCAR Radio. This is episode 179 of NASCAR Radio, where trading cards and racing meet. I'm your pal Val, and with me is the man, the myth, the legend, PSA, and White Castle Hall of Famer, Logan. How are you today, tonight, tomorrow? I'm feeling immaculate. How do you like that? I like that a lot, yeah. <laughs> and then we're excited to welcome back Misha Wines, the assistant brand manager, Panini. Grand Poobah. Yeah, definitely the Grand Poobah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, no, we're super excited to have you on. We've got a great show for everybody today. We're going to do racing recap. <laughs> a little racing going on at Daytona between the rain. <laughs> and then uh, Prism. We, we're going to review the sale sheet, and it is slated for late February. So, And then we'll finish the show with King's Court. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Naturally Panini America. And shout outs to Beans, Ball Card Blog, Kyle Katz, Tim Mousey, used to be fast. I didn't buy these. Jason Freeman, Harahelion 311, High Octane Cards, Robbie's Hobbies, and Justin Williams for the YouTube comments. We read them, so please leave them. And we, and we also respond to them, too. Yes, we do. And then we're talking about. Prism being released to 2824. So it should change, and I'm sure Misha has something to say about that. It's coming. Too bad, it's too bad they don't have it on the 29th. It could be a leap year release. Okay. Yeah. No, then, but Prism released every four years? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, let's get into the race and recap. Had a few races going on. Uh, races moved up, moved to the next day. All kinds of great stuff. Hard to follow. Um, but NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, race number one. That was the fresh from Florida to 50. That was Friday, February 16th. Nick Sanchez was our winner. Highest finishing rookie was Lane Riggs at position 33. Not a lot of rookies in uh Daytona. No, but a lot of crashing. Oh, man. There was a lot of crashing. That was... I think it bro uh, broke a record, I think, if I remember right. It was a crash fest all weekend, so... So what do you think about it, Misha? That, not, oh, yeah. So Misha, that? Misha was actually on premises. Yes. Uh, at Truck Race, we, um, we were actually at a party across the street from the track. But they had like Florida wall or Florida ceiling uh, TVs, so they had the race on. So we were just standing around talking. We were watching the race, and they just couldn't get a rhythm. There was yeah. a couple laps, and then something would get out of hand, and it's just okay. Let's let's tidy this up, boys. Yeah, lots of young aggression, aggression. Uh, lots of bumping and dra bumping where they shouldn't be bumping people. It, it was just. You know, a lot of inexperience, I think. Well, it was the truck series, though. A lot of a lot of rookies and stuff. And and we had our, you know, winner, Nick Sanchez. His rookies were only in 2022, so that's been around that long. Yeah, I'm proud for him. Um, I was glad to see him win. His, his signature has changed drastically over the last couple of years, though, too. Yeah, I don't know. We know what that is. Uh, I guess it's a... It looks like a script G, but uh, his, his rookie, to me anyway, his rookies are in 2022, Dunruss. He has a rated rookie with all the different parallels, printing plates, and signature series. Also in 2022, Penny Chronicles, Clear Vision, Clearly Donna's Contenders, Optic, Obsidian, Spectra, Stars and Stripes, and Zenith. Also in 2022, Panini Prism. With all the, the parallel sensational signatures as well. And he's also in National Treasures, card number 104. There's plenty of jumbo fire suit booklets, signature booklets, associate sponsors, jumbo fire suit gloves, shoe patch, shoe tongue, shoe tire booklet. Uh, there's National Treasures Midnight, Rising Stars, Rookie Patches, Autographs, and, and Stars and Stripes, and Rookie Signatures. As well, so lots of Nick Sanchez cards in 2022. 
Yeah, and he's got all the classic poses too. He's got the hands on the hip, the cross, crossed arms. He's got his hands behind his back. He's got his hands down to the side. He's doing good. Yeah, the one on the side is the ones on the side on his hips. Is that the Superman pose? I was thinking like yep. Christopher Reeves that one. <laughs> that is Superman pose. Okay, there you go. So uh, we could do NASCAR production day. Give me a Superman pose. Okay. Yeah. Uh, highest finished rookie was. Lane Riggs, and he doesn't have any cards yet. Does he have any yes. cards coming, Misha? Yes. Can you tell? Okay. You All right. Exclusive here on NASCAR Radio. Yeah. All right. Next race, race number two. That's the FR8 208 Atlanta Motor Speedway. That's Saturday, February February 24th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Moving over to the Xfinity Series, there was race number one, and that was the United Rentals 300. And that was supposed to be Saturday. Uh, February 17th, but that was not the case. That was moved to Monday. And the winner for that was Austin Hill. Highest finishing rookie was Shane Van Ginsburg at position 12. That was a really late race. Mm -hmm. And that was weird having a race after the Daytona 500. While everybody's in victory lane at the Daytona 500, there's a race going on. That's, I don't know that that's ever happened before. That was two doubles, man. That was get your money's worth for those two days. Watching that Xfinity race, and I, it just didn't seem that important because we just no. saw the Daytona 500. It didn't seem like there was anything they were racing for. That's a good point, Misha, because I felt the same way. It's like, so what? You know, we just saw the Daytona 500. I mean, it was very anticlimactic for sure. Now, the interesting was Austin Hill. Now, that's his third. Daytona win. So that was pretty impressive. I think he's only got like seven wins and five of them are like it's on the super speedways or whatever. So um so that was impressive winning three. But he's to your point, <laughs> nobody nobody's awake to see it. I know I wasn't. I tried to uh record that and I only went to like 130 and I didn't get the end of the race. So <laughs> I, I didn't think a race would go longer than 130, but I should know better by now. Just yeah. record the whole night. Jeez. Anyway, so we did talk about like Austin Hill, our highest finishing, and his rookies are in 2021 Dunruss. He actually has two. He has the uh, base 81 and also the retro 88 card 156, and then all the different parallels. He also he's also in 2021. Dunruss Optic has optic signatures as well in printing plates. 2021 Panini Chronicles with Zenith and Spectra. Not a lot of Chronicles cards for him. And then also in 2021 Panini Prism, but only signing sessions. And that was it. I didn't see anything for National Treasures. So not a ton. And then Highest Fisher Ricky. Shane Van Ginsburg, as of now, he only has the 2013 V8 supercars, uh, the uh, car number 26 and 54 out of Australia. And I think that's like limited to 500 or less. It's like a box set it came out of. Yes, that's ex that's correct. That's that's what I've seen as well. It's been a box set. Uh, there's, as far as I know, there's no packs. But I have a feeling, though, he's going to be – Coming out and dumb uh, from Panini soon enough, so looking forward to that. So he, hey, as a rookie finishing twelfth in Daytona, that's pretty good. It is. It's very good. You know, a lot better than Haley. She was caught up in that very first wreck. What was it on lap six or something? Um, you know, I'm going to give her a pass on this one, but you know. I don't think she's ever met a wreck she didn't like because she's like in every freaking wreck. It seems like when, when there's a wreck on the track, it's like, oh my God, where's Haley? Uh, oh, well, she's in the wreck. But uh, I'm hoping next week in Atlanta she does better. I like I'm giving her a pass this week, but she's got she's got to step it up, man. She's got to. She got that wreck finder on. <laughs> uh, to your point, man. If there if there is a two car accident. She's one of them. Well, I, 
I'm sure Richard Petty might have something to say about this because we all know what he said about Danica. I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, I was really hoping that she would make it at least a decent amount into the race, but to your point, it seemed like it was really early, and it's happening too often. So we'll see. We'll hope for Atlanta for a different uh, different outcome a little longer. So yeah, for some redemption, hopefully. Exactly. Next race for Xfinity, number race number two. That's going to be the King of Tough 250 Atlanta Motor Speedway, Saturday, February 24th at 5 p.m. And over at the Cup, they had race number one. That was Daytona 500, and that was Monday. And William Byron was our winner. Highest finish rookie was Zane Smith at position 13. That ending. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I'm a Bowman Wait. fan. I'm a Bowman fan. I don't want to talk about that ending. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people that don't understand how the rules work. Uh, but I will say this about the ending of it. Um, I'm not going to say that William Byron didn't have a good car. I'm not going to say that, that uh, you know, Alex Bowman didn't have a good car either. But... You know, this to me, and I, this is what I uh, tweeted on Twitter on X. You know, it's it kind of reminded me of like the drunk that has a car wreck and he comes out of it unscathed, and that's kind of what happened here. They you know, Bowman and 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 Byron caused the big wreck, but they were not in it. So that really, you know, the way I looked at it is if you can't if you can't beat them, wreck them. I mean, I, I know that may sound bad. But that's kind of the way it, it ended. I, I don't I know it wasn't intentional, but it was just, you know, and, and I and I certainly know that everybody is, you know, it's 10 laps to go and everybody's going for it. And it, it just it, it just the finish wasn't a finish that I really liked. I didn't think it was very exciting per se. Um, but that's just how I feel. Sorry. So what do you guys think? Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say it's the opposite of the bump and run. It's a dump and run. Yeah, but I, I will say that the Golden Horseshoe, <laughs> and I made like I may have made this comment too somewhere, that the Golden Horseshoe is definitely at Hendrick. It did it when Jimmy left; they kept it, <laughs> and now it's being passed around. So, so Misha, go ahead. Let's, let's see, let's see what you have to say. If I say anything, it's going to tear into you. Go for it, man. I don't care. I'm, I'm tough. <laughs> I'm a Hendrick fan, so I know you are. Yeah. Don't let him kid you. He, we went to Hendrick's shop and watched them do the pit stops, whatever. So it's not like he. I, I made sure he he did not burst into flames when he was on the campus. So <laughs> it didn't happen. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. It didn't happen. But so. my feet were starting to burn a little bit while I was burn. walking well, on, they, okay. on the pavement there. But still, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm happy for William. I'm happy for Alex. I saw some people talk on Twitter like, oh, these guys have no personality. I'm I'm mad that they won. William's one of the hottest drivers in the past two years now. Alex is coming back from a back injury. That's mm -hmm. good for him. That's going to be good for his confidence. So William's period where he left off. Alex is coming back. Maybe he's 100% healthy. I would love to see both of them at like their full potential. Because William's still young. He's 25. Yes, he's young. he's younger than me. That's the making of a superstar. So. Yeah, I thought you were like eighteen or nineteen, dude. <laughs> I'm actually fourteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, looking over those top ten things that jump out, you Christopher Bell third, Corey LaJoy fourth, Bubba Wallace fifth, AJ Amendinger sixth, John Hunter, Hunter Nemechek seven, Eric Jones. Eighth, Noah Gretzkin, ninth, Chase Briscoe, tenth, and Kyle Larson, eleventh. So, well, I think eighteen cars were in that big wreck. So when you wreck, when literally almost half the field gets wrecked, because I think it was a field of forty cars, when half the field gets wrecked, I mean, what do you expect, man? They had to avoid it. So, yeah, and Chase Elliott, did you see Chase Elliott? He was like, do 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 do. He just rides right through it. It's like, wow, <laughs> how lucky can you be? Golden horseshoe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't I don't think Eric Jones or um, yeah, Eric Jones or Noah Gregson was mentioned a single time 
or John Hunter Namacek on the broadcast. I think they were right. quiet. I mean, they, they were quiet all day. Or Ty freaking Gibbs. They hardly mentioned him either. They mentioned him, I guess, at the beginning of the of the broadcast, but that was you're right. After that, forget it. I don't know why, but yep. Yeah, uh, well, congrats, see. congrats to him though. Congrats to Byron. That's you know well deserved, man. You got to you got to outlast everybody else, and he did that. All right. So William Byron cards. You know, it's one of the reasons I love 2016 Panini Certified. It's his only base card with the different parallels, certified potential signatures as well. And then in 2016 Panini Torque, he has driver script autographs and 2016 Panini Prism driver signature Prism autographs. And that is it for William Byron. So, I mean, the kid's Daytona 500 winner. He Hendrick's got a tough... Tough stable of drivers, man. Yeah, they've really come along for sure. When he when he first got Bowman and Byron, I'm like, eh, I don't know about that, but they, they've really developed those guys well for sure, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, then Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott, no slouches either. No, I was Cup, I was Cup champions, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's uh, Hendrick's got a really really tough shop. And then our highest finishing rooker, rookie. Zane Smith, and we know that name coming up through the different series. So we watched him. Uh, I think he won. What was I going to say the truck series? It was a few years ago. Let me look here. My uh, yeah, 2022 Craftsman Truck Series champion. And his rookies are in 2018 Dunruss. He's in that next in line. He also has 2018 Dunruss Signature Series uh, cards and. Also, 2018 Panini Certified, Certified Next Signatures, 2018 Panini Prime, Clear sil Silhouettes, and 2018 Panini Victory Lane. He has a base card there. No autos, different parallels, and printing plates for 2018 Panini Victory Lane. Not a ton of uh, 2018 for him, so, but he's definitely mm -hmm. working his way up. Already a previous champion in the Trek Series, and here he is... Uh, Going for rookie of the year in cup. Yeah, and, and kudos to his signature. Unlike some other people who just scribble scribble, his is actually almost halfway readable. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. These days. Right. And our next race is going to be race number two as the Am Better Health 400 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And that's Sunday, February 25th at 3 p.m. Stages are end of lap 60, 160, and 260. Are you and going to that race, Misha? I am not. Not too bad. My next uh, scheduled race is Circuit of the Americas. Coda. Yep. So Austin is what, about a couple, two, two, three hours away from? Three, three and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. Texas is a big freaking state. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a great state. Yes, it um, is. Moving over to Formula One, they're still off. Their first race is until March 2nd, 10 a.m. And then IndyCar is off until Sunday, March 10th. And that is the racing recap. It's going to get busy next month, dude. I hope so. <laughs> it's going to get real busy. Yeah. And speaking of busy, we've already had some Panini releases here with Prime. And Chronicles, and now Prism is slated to come out next week. So, yeah. So, before we go any further, uh, you know, Misha, we know you were down in Daytona with the, the winner of the Daytona 500 contest. Yes. So, do you want to talk about your experiences there? What, uh, because I know I think this was this your first time to Daytona? It's my first time at Daytona. Yep. Yeah. So, let everybody know what, uh, what you all did, what happened, you know, what kind of fun things you did, and stuff like that. Logan wants to know because he thought it for sure he's going to win this year. I missed it by that much, really. Yeah. I mean, so, he wants to know what he missed. So You were one coat away. You I needed that one coat away. I'm going to remember that. One coat away. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Misha. Sorry. So um, we got there on Thursday. Then we went and watched the duels. We went in the infield a lot. Just hung out. Just I showed my director 
like certain things. I showed them like pit road, victory lane, showed them all the fun stuff. Um, and we like walking through, just walking through the turn four tunnel, just a super cool experience. Just the history that's gone on just at the track in general is awesome. And then Friday, we went to the track, hung out, watched practices and qualifying and everything. And I think I walked over 11 miles. I was walking through the garage areas, trucks, uh, Xfinity Cup, talked to some drivers. Um, Christian Rose, he's a he's an ARCA driver. He's going to be one of our rated rookies this year. So I talked to him. Uh, he seems excited to be part of having his first trading cards, which I love to see. Seeing these drivers get excited about their cards. It's like, oh, so such a cool opportunity. I never thought I'd have this have this chance. So that was fun. I talked to Raja Karuth, Corey Heim, a uh, couple others, Ty Dillon. Talked to a lot of the Xfinity and truck guys. So just got their uh, just got their feelings about cards and whatnot. And then that was probably the main thing we did Friday night. And was it Sun? Was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. We did the meet and greet with Joey Logano. And it was a winner and then her three friends from Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's a historical racing city. Uh, yes. So And those bar work very well. Yes. So we took them, we met with them in the infield. Then we took them to the driver lot and they did the little meet and greet with Joey. They talked to him. They opened some boxes. We're just standing off to the side, talking amongst ourselves, letting them have their time. So they, they had a blast, got some signed cards from Joey. And then. What, oh, they, let me interrupt you real quick. What kind of boxes did they open? And did they have any cool hits? They opened two boxes of prime. And then they also had a couple boxes of Chronicles which they did not open at that time. So they, I think they opened a little later, I'd hope. Um, but if they boxes weren't the best, but they were still free boxes for them. So, and, and then we took, we, uh, they got a tour of the garage of the cup series garage. And then they would have, they would have gone to Joey's um, hauler, but they were happy with the car, so there was no work to be done. They were all just relaxing. But they got to see his car up close. I mean, they got to talk to Joey. They got a little private talk session with Joey, which is really cool. Then from there, we they got the tour of the garage and kind of just sent them on their way. It's like, you guys have access to everything. Y'all can go anywhere you want. Y'all have tickets up in the stands for Daytona for all the races. Go enjoy yourselves. Wow, that's cool. So in the past, I've seen on social media where the winner gets this special one-of-one one card. Did they get a card like that too? I did not see it. We did not present anything there like that unless um, Scotty sent it with their care package. Yeah, so. he, he might have. But yeah, I, I have seen that in the past. I was just curious of if, if there was one, what, you know, I guess Joey Logano was probably on it. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I mean that was about it. It was a pretty simple thing. Uh, they seemed to be very, uh, very interested in everything going on, because it's not not every day you get to go tour a professional sporting events, like inner workings and places where you're not going to be down on the sidelines for like or in the locker room for football or basketball or something. They yeah. they really enjoyed it. It definitely gives you another aspect of the, of the sport, right? So instead of that whole, you know, turning left and all that stuff and being down the stands, I think when you go down to the, the the pits and the garage and you see all the work, engineering, and everything that goes into setting up a race car and stuff and talking to the drivers, it brings a whole nother level or more to the sport. So, Absolutely. So, so you, you weren't able to be a fanboy since you were down there. You couldn't get any autographs. That's too bad, though. 
Yeah, but um, the more I've done it, like I did in Charlotte, I was just there to hang out with the drivers or talk to them while they're signing, like show them, like get them where they need to be in our room. Here, it's really no different. I just see someone, hey man, how you doing? How you feeling? Yeah, still good on your contract and autographs and everything. I mean, it's really not nothing I haven't done before now, which is cool to say. It's like I'm used to it. Yeah, look at you, man. We're proud of you. <laughs> That's cool. So, unfortunately, you had to leave before the they ran the 500. You already had a flight schedule, and you had to get out of Dodge, unfortunately. That's too bad. Hopefully, next year, the weather will cooperate, and you'll be able to you'll be able to stay the whole time and be able to see the race. Right. Yeah, it was Sunday night. Um, I was sitting in my hotel room. And it was probably about the time the 500 would have finished. And I start feeling like I was so close. I am here. I made it out here. I've been to the track and I don't get to go. Yeah, but that's a bummer, man. It really is. It was, a it was like what I told you, told you, told you uh, earlier. Uh, better things are coming, man. So just be, be on the lookout. It's coming your way. Well, one of the things I was posting was Mother Nature 2, NASCAR 0. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. So, I mean, I bought the hat. I bought, I did, I really didn't buy much there. Just trying to soak it all in. You know, I should have got you to look for a, a Daytona 500 pennant for me. And I didn't even think about it. Get too late now. <laughs> they might have some online. Yeah, they might. So, yeah. Where are you going to put it? You got no room. <laughs> Up above. I, I got maybe one or two little, I think there's a space over there that might fit one. <laughs> He's going to staple it to his back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got this one right here that I got in, in 2008. I was going to say, I know you either replace that one or put it in place of it or <clears throat> hang it with it. So, yeah. So, so that's cool, Misha. I, I'm, I'm glad you got to go down there. I'm glad you had fun. It sounds like it was a blast, man. I, I'd have been a if I had been that contest winner, I'd have been ping pong off everything. Nah, because Val knows how I was when I was in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you win this year. So we'll see. Oh God. Well, you're going, Val. Okay. Misha will be there. My son will be there, and I don't know who the fourth person will be that I would take. <laughs> if if Panini doesn't take me next year for whatever reason. You're going I with take, I'm going no matter what. So cool, man. All right. Well, yeah, it was a great race. So. All right. All right. Let's uh, switch some real quick. Uh, I do want to maybe get your take, Misha, on this. Have you seen? I'm sure you've seen. We, we talked about the pristine auction, the bounty for Tony Brudinger. I don't. To my knowledge, I don't think that card has been pulled yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. I, I know I've seen the promotion. I've seen the advertisements for it. I haven't seen the card. I, I know you guys have nothing to do with it, but just I'm sure when that gets hit, there's going to be – you guys will probably hear about it. So We'll hear – we'll probably hear about it. Someone will be like – what? Like they're going to ask us, were we involved with it? Were we doing anything? Was there a partnership? I think that – I, that's the least I can expect. So, so, and then there's another one as well, the Haley Deegan, which we know hasn't been released in Prime or Chronicle. So, I, or I haven't, I haven't, I don't think she's on the checklist. And I, when we looked, and I haven't heard anything about it either. So, I'm assuming maybe she's in. Yeah. Um, she's not in Prism. I don't believe she's in prison. Okay. Uh, so that leaves NT. So. Oh, wow. Okay. And speaking of prison, that's that slated for next week. I haven't looked to see if the checklist was out today, but checklist does not come out yet. Okay. Then that'll be the, the double check on the Haley Deacon 75th anniversary. But um, I thought we'd go through the cell sheet and maybe uh, call some things out some things that maybe are not in the sales sheet that you could talk about and um i thought we would we would do that so let me close them 
windows here. So the Pinhe Prism 23 Prism Racing. Man, I still want a checkered flag, but I guess I'll have to wait. <laughs> Design. So our first, what was that? Oh, I was going to say, I hope it's not the same color as another sport box. Oh, it's like purple. Baseball. It is purple. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I Here we go. It is a very purple box, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. I think you can almost see that from space. Yeah. <laughs> or how many batteries it takes to charge that box. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you shake it up and it glows. <laughs> All right. Um, so here is our first slide, the base checkered flag and the rides disco prismatic gold that's interesting i don't remember that before and let me see here with a little verbiage down here there's no shortage of sets in search or parallels to collect in 2023 prism racing build the 100 card base set chase the rainbow of your favorite driver or complete the multiple insert sets that's all my writing. So if you hate on it, just keep that to yourself. <laughs> no, I love the writing. No, I like to chase the rainbow. It makes me think of Skittles. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, I love the checkered flag. I'm so excited that is uh, back. Golf clap. Yeah. And I don't know. Is it uh, is it numbered? I think it was numbered. It at is 50. the 50. Okay. So we got 50, 75, and 10 on here okay. on this uh, sale sheet right there. I'm assuming that prismatic is an insert set? Yes. Okay. And our next slide, we have the color wheel. Ooh. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. The championship trophy and profiles. That profile looks familiar. That kind of looks like... Yeah. Um, Is that 21? 20. Yeah, I think 21 Prism or 2020 Wait. Prism had profiles. Okay. So uh, look for ultra rare color wheel inserts featuring the biggest names in NASCAR history. Celebrate the history of NASCAR with this set that features former champions of the sport. That's the championship trophy. And under profiles, hunt for the ultra rare profile set that gives a good look to your favorite drivers. So the color wheel, is that replacing the color blast? Uh, so I'm assuming it's ultra rare and or is it maybe not color addition? blast rare, but it is rare. Okay, so color blast is still there. Oh goodness, uh, uh, is it? Well, if you I don't if you can't answer it, then that's fine. Or yeah. you can't answer you can't answer it and you know we'll cover it when the checklist comes out, but right. It is uh, a rare, yes, rare car. It's, I uh, love that thing, man. I love that car. It looks good. Yeah, it uh, looks good with that, that red fire suit and that background. So the championship trophy and the profiles there, it's uh, pretty cool looking as well. Yes. Yeah. Championship trophy is going to be one of a couple insert sets that are basically fall one per box. So. Okay. You'll get like a mix of those in a case. It's kind of like, um, I guess it was, was it last year? Um, that it seemed like, it wasn't like maybe one per case, but it was like one of those special inserts per box. Right, and, yeah. And, and so, but not every box had had one of those. So it was, um, you know, I guess an SP or, or more. Yeah, about three, three quarters of the boxes have them. Yeah. So those are all cool. And moving over to the next slide here, we have the Rookie Stripe Signature Prism, Scripps Prism Gold Vinyl, and Autographs Rainbow. And plenty of autographs to go around in 2023 Prism. And the list of names includes Hall of Fame drivers, current stars, the biggest names and the first all rookie autograph set in Prism. I always love the rainbow cards. They're my favorites, always. Yeah. I like those Look. rookie stripes. Those are cool. It's That's reminiscent, really cool. Reminiscent of, was it old Press Pass had that? Um, 
of rookie yeah, strike. They had, they had like the race used tape from the mm-hmm. bumper or something. It's kind of reminiscent. It looks it looks good, yeah. And just get tied to sign it good. <laughs> actually, that doesn't look bad. You can actually see kind of kind of a T and kind of a Y there. <laughs> That's Misha signing it. Way to go, oh, Misha. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I think Bella could sign that. I think she could. Yeah. Yeah, Bella, the official Boston Terrier of NASCAR Radio. <laughs> yeah, so uh, some some new uh, insert sets. So those are pretty cool. And then uh, naturally summing it up, the selling points uh, staple in the racing lineup returns in twenty for 2023 for the fan favorite Opti Chrome cards for Logan there. Collect six like rides, kaleidoscope, widescreen, national pride, and others to go along with the base set. Hunt for the rare jackpot, championship trophy, groovy, and profiles inserts. So jackpot's new. Groovy I've never heard of before. I love that because I'm always saying groovy. groovy. I know you are. <laughs> you, that's what you're going to go after. Yeah. yeah. Groovy was a soccer set. So we okay. brought it over to racing. And it. the feedback in the office today was, that's a cool card. That's a good looking card. So hopefully the collectors like it. Yeah, so chase your favorite driver in multiple parallels and short prints. Find four autographs per box on average. 12 cards a pack, 12 packs a box, full boxes, a case, four autographs, and at least 20 prism parallels per box. Do we know? I, I have not gone out and looked. Do we know what the pre sale price on, is on these boxes? Uh, it looks like one. 30 or 140 on blowout. Yeah, I think blowout was 139. Yeah, one right at 139.95. Yeah. That's I mean, you're getting four autographs. Holy smokes. I mean, you can't say that in any other sport. You can't you can't say that. And for well, that price know, point. Getting those silver prisms and parallels as well. So it's a a double win. Yes, it, yeah, I like that. A double win. I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody wants autos. Everybody loves the when it comes to prism, the parallels, right? Numbered parallels. Yeah, they um, chase the rainbow. We had what was it four unnumbered parallels in the past? But the red, the blue, and the two fluorescents. The like, green, the green, and the orange. We have numbered two of those. Oh, all right, great. Ooh, good. Because I think when I figured it up. There was like 15 or 20 unnumbered, and then there was a handful of numbered as well. So, so Misha, are they, are you guys going to have the same amount of parallels this year? You know, the different colors and things as last year, or are there more or less? Or do you know? Uh, it's pretty similar. Okay. I don't think we got rid of too many yeah, off the top of my head. I think we have pretty much the same parallels, but just some of them are numbered now, which is. It's NASCAR. Get the value where you can. If a unnumbered blue prism sells for two dollars, and we can make it sell for four to five dollars with numbering it to a higher number, I think it's still a win. Agreed. I'm still waiting on the poop poop emoji parallel. Still, I mean, I've been asking for that for years. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'll draw one up for you. Oh, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so is there anything else uh, that wasn't on the sales sheet that you can talk about that you can think about real quick? Any other special parallels or inserts that we need to be looking for? Manga. Those oh, are gonna be, mangas are back. Yes. Mangas are back. Um, <clears throat> the 75th anniversary autos. I know some people took issue with it's a premium product or it's like this. It needs to be all thick cards or the same program. I, what I want to say is going to be very, would be mean, but it's all on card autos for those 75th. Would you rather have three sticker autos, two, three sticker autos, and then two on card autos that would basically sell for the same thing to, it's the same, either the same, pretty much the same driver or a very similar driver to what would be there if there were, if it was a prism card. I'm, I'm glad they're there. 
you know, they're on card. They're beautiful cards. I, I have no issue with them being in any product whatsoever. I think it's a great thing, in my opinion. We're going to look back in a few years, and it's just going to be like the 2021 the buybacks. Those are going to be the 75th. It's a once in a lifetime thing for a sport to go 75 years. Mm -hmm. Special inserts like that, we won't see for who knows where trading cards will be in 25 years. So. Plus, there's no redemptions for them. No redemptions for them, right. They're all live, so. Yeah. yeah, so that's a good thing for the value of the boxes going forward. You know for sure that you're going to have the chance to get those live autos in there. So yeah. I think it's a win. It's like what Val said. It's a, it's a double win. It's a win-win. Yeah. So, so the regular Prism autos, are those sticker or going to be on card? Everything Prism is going to be sticker. Okay. Except for the 75th. And then the redemptions will hopefully be in getting filled quickly once it releases. So there are going to be, I think, over 50% of the boxes will have a redemption, unfortunately. But if we waited six more weeks, we may not, like, we don't know what's going to happen. Who's going to send stuff in? Who's going to sign? Right, and you, right. you could be waiting weeks and. That exactly. number might not move, so we got to get this twenty-three stuff out. Yes, you do. You got to get it knocked out so we get to twenty-four. We got Donner sits waiting in the wings, so I'm. I want to get to twenty-four. I'm excited for twenty-four Donruss. It is my first build that me and my new director like sat down and we built it. So I just I want to get that out. I want to get twenty-three stuff out first and get that settled in. But 24, oh, it's going to be fun. So have you ever had any thought or any fear that there'd be somewhat kind of a fatigue because of all these releases happening here within, say, four months or whatever? Of course. Uh, I mean, but you also look at uh, NASCAR fans, collectors have been kind of starved. So you get something done, you get something pushed out. Everyone, there's hype, it's hype. Which we're hoping the hype stays at a constant level for Prime and Chronicles when Prism comes out, because it's basically three sets catering to three different types of collectors. So sure. if we can match the audience for each set, I think that's our best case scenario where the Prime Hunters, the Prime Patch Hunters will be buying Prime no matter what still. Chronicles guys will be building those sets for a while. And then people who like the OptiChrome will be going after that. Get some of these drivers to uh, open some packs on social media. Absolutely. That'd be great. So one, one quick question, though, regarding the 75th anniversary. What are your all's plans for the 100th anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> Hit me close to retirement. <laughs> Yeah. What, I be, what are they, 51? Who knows? I might be working at NASCAR by then. Who knows? You, you might be. Um, the reason I say that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to derail this conversation completely here, but I'm an IT guy. Val's an IT guy. We all remember Y2K and the impl impl implications of what could have happened and what didn't happen. But I, I remember we went to a customer. We were in a meeting. We were talking about what we were going to do for them to help them resolve or mitigate any Y2K issues. And we're in this meeting with like some C-level people and things. And there's this one lady that never said anything at all off to the side. She never said a word during the meeting. So we get done with the meeting and she goes, I have a question. And we go, yeah, what's your question? She goes, what about Y3K? Yeah. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. Let's move on. All right. I think that's <laughs> all we have right now. So if there's nothing else, we go to King's Court. Yes. Roll the beautiful bean footage. I'm actually going to hop off. I got that's some uh, stuff to go take care of, but well, I thank, will talk to you later. Thank you, Misha, for joining us. We really appreciate you, it. Brother. Take care. All right. See y'all later. Yep. I'm in. All right. Again, appreciate Misha joining us uh, to go over those.
subjects there. So, yeah, appreciate him. We really appreciate his time as, as always. Yep. All right, let's do this. Do it. All right. This week in this week's King's Court, we are going to celebrate all things Chronicles. This is going to be a Chronicles-centric King's Court. So let's start off with our honorable mention number one. Dun, da, da, da. This is on the 15th of February. It's a Richard Petty 2023 Chronicles Spectra Color Blast Burst is what it says. Insert case hit number A10. And this card went out for bidding. And I think this is really cool looking. And it went for $153.93 with 43, excuse me, 43, 19 bids. I'm thinking of Richard Petty. <laughs> but the reason, the reason I was thinking that real quick is I see the 93. If you subtract 50 from that, which would have been an increment somewhere within, you know, the bidding, I think 43 was at the end of this at one point or another of the, the price before it, before it ended, ended at that price. So this is a Spectra? Yes. I didn't think Spectra was around. I didn't either, but I think it's a special Spectra. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's right, number like every place it. And it looks like the color blast. So I wonder if they moved that. I'm going to write, make some notes. I'm going to do some digging on that. Yeah. that's When I saw that, I'm like, uh, hubba hubba. I got to have that. <laughs> that. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it is, man. It's the king, and everybody knows how much I love the king. He's my hero. Mm -hmm. And how much did that go for? 153. 153.93. Yeah. 19 bids. All right. Yeah. Pretty strong, man. Okay. Next. All right. Next. Honorable mention number two. This was on the 14th of February. It's a 2023 Panini Prime Racing Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And it's a jumbo patch card with the Sunny D logo. It's, it's a one of one, of course. And this card also went out for bidding. It went for $122.50. With 37 bids. I love that embroidery. Me too, man. That is sweet. Man, if somebody had Sunny D give anything for that, that's really cool. <laughs> I'm surprised somebody who, who who works at Sunny D did not bid on that or didn't know anything about it because man, I, I could have seen that one go for a lot of money. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it is. All the different colors. I don't know how many co different colors there are. There, there's at least one, two, three. Four or five different colors at least. Yeah. All right. So cool, man. Yeah, that was a great patch right there. All right. Our Joker of the Week. This was on the 13th of February. It's a 2023 Panini Chronicles Immaculate Racing. Number 66, Kurt Bush, 5 of 10, Hollow Silver. And the reason I've got this as my Joker is because, first of all, his uniform is kind of funky looking. But. He's also got the Jumpman logo. And see, I wish Misha was on right now for that because so we could ask him some questions about that if it's okay to. Well, I guess it's okay because they did it. But they have the Jumpman logo on there. Yeah, I mean, it's so, on the fire suit. So, yeah. So I guess I guess they have the right to do that at some point. So, but you know, it's his uniform is just so different. It's so, it's, it's, it, I, I'm trying to think of the word I want to say. Busy. <laughs> it, okay. There, I like that. It's busy. Yes, we'll 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 stick with that. Okay. But I, oh, I didn't tell the price. It, oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It went it went for forty dollars. You know, they had a best offer or a, yeah, best offer of forty dollars. They were asking forty five. Okay. So yeah, it went for forty bucks. So not bad. Number five to ten. All right. All right. Next up's our Jack of the Week. This is our young driver. This is also on the thirteenth of February. 2023 Panini Chronicles Racing Contenders number seven, Parker Chase, rookie card, gold vinyl, one of one with his auto on there. I like that. Has, yeah, I do too. That's a great looking card. Um, they were asking $174.99 for this. And guess what, Bat Val? Guess what happened? They cl click a click. Wow. A click, or click. Yeah. And bought it for $174.99. I like those racing contenders. It might, kind of reminds me of like the basketball or football. You know, it looks like kind of like the stick it, ticket stub. 
Yeah, it does. Because it's got the you know section row seat number and mm-hmm. the season ticket hold. So that's yeah, pretty that's, cool. I like that. Yeah, and it went for went for a heck of a price. So you got there's definitely some Parker Chase fans out there. That's cool. Well, he can start the he can start the the uh, rainbow with that. Sure can, man. That's the good thing about getting the one on ones for sure. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's go. Next. What's next? Ooh. Next up is yeah our queen of the week. I love those lightning cards. I do too, man. Uh, this was on the nineteenth of February. It's a twenty twenty three Haley Deegan Panini Chronicles NASCAR Racing Lightning Gold Prism Auto to ten. They were asking one forty nine ninety nine for this card. The best offer was one hundred twenty five dollars. Nice. That's actually the signature is pretty good. She did good on that signature. She signed those stickers very well. So I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. The, I like those lightning. Those uh, look really nice. I like do too. Cool. I like the lightning and the thunder ones too. Yeah. I saw some of the thunders. They were pretty cool too. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's, a, I think that's a fair price for that. It's at, you know, like I said, it's out of 10. Yeah. I mean, um, we've seen stuff go for crazy money. I, I think that's pretty, to me anyway, I think it's a reasonable, reasonable price. Yeah, I think it is too. So, congrats to the buyer and the seller. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Our king of the week. This is on the 20th of February. It's a Jeff Gordon Auto One of One Donruss Chronicles Classics Racing. That's what it says. And you know what? Yeah. Yeah. It says, it says Donruss Chronicles. And I'm looking at the description. But I, I, I assume that came out of, I assume that came out of Chronicles because that's what yeah. the description said. But yeah, but because yeah, I've seen a bunch of those here recently, so they had to have come out of Chronicles. But anyway, um, this card went out for bidding, and it ended up at three hundred fifty-five dollars with only four bids. Oh, wow, it's a it's a nice card. It's a very nice card. I, I, I like that, that card classics. Look. Yeah, I have to check out that classics line. Yeah, I am too. That's 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 a nice one. They yeah, I haven't opened any Chronicles yet, but hopefully we can get a we can open some. On the show, so yeah, I'd like to be able to do it hopefully one day here soon, or maybe do a special episode. Who knows? Yeah, that, I like that classics. That kind of reminds me as that I don't want to say '90s feel, but I like it. it yeah, it does kind of have that, like like uh, the Donruss Elite, something like that. It has that kind of feel. Right. Yeah, I, I I agree, and I noticed that also the other autos out of this same series, you know, certainly not the one of one. But they're all going for pretty decent prices, so people really like this card. So cool, man! It's really awesome. Like it I said, is. it's a good look. It's a good looking card, right? So yeah, it's not super fancy. Um, it's you know, it's pretty modest in the design, and I think that's what makes you know that's the appeal. Definitely. So, all right. So next, I mean, we had a lot of one of ones already tonight, but this is our real one of one. This was on the 15th of February. It's a 2023 Panini Chronicles Prime Bubba. And it's a Sunoco race used, race worn patch, one of one. Uh, they were asking $400 for that, which, you know, I, I think it's worth that right there. But they did settle on a best offer of something slightly less than that of 375 bucks. That's that's nice, nice embroidery. You know that Sunoco logo. It is. You know, it's not any of that silk screen stuff that we've seen recently. That I'm not really a big fan of. I think the embroidery is the way to go. Made me think of the Cheez Its when we saw it at the National. Yes. Oh man, that. <laughs> I thought about buying that one, but remember we saw they sold it and it was at somebody else's table and they had it jacked up pretty Yeah, high. They had it twice, the, twice the prize. But... Yeah, we saw it kind of float around the national. Yeah. But that's, that's a nice, nice patch. I think that's a, a good price. Uh, and a it's nice, a looking, nice looking patch. Yeah. And it's well, the card's well done. It's well centered. It looks, looks great. And plus we love Bubba anyway. Oh yeah. I was hoping he, he would be able to be a dark horse and win the 500, but anyway, he's close. Our, yeah, he was. He was close. All right. All right. So last, we have our Royal Flush, and that's our highest price card. This was on the 14th. It was Valentine's Day of February, 2023. Panini Chronicles Racing. Haley Deegan, Immaculate Platinum 
Apollo one of one. And look at this card, man. It went for $532.22 with 31 bids. Wow. I think this is the first time we've ever had uh, a female driver as is our Royal Flush. But, of course, this is a special episode with just Chronicles. Yeah, it's at Immaculate 101. Yeah, and this was the highest price card, period. It's so, nice and card. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that bottom left corner, but... I saw uh, that when I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, man, it's a 101, yeah. for Christ's sake. How did that happen? Yeah, but, it's, uh, it's a nice-looking looking card. I like that with the dark fire suit on the, on the white, you know, the swishes through the middle. It's a nice looking mm. card. It's a beauty, man. It's a one on one. I mean, I get excited every time I pull a one on one, man. You just the, th the thrill of pulling that. So whoever pulled that, I know they were excited. I would have been excited to pull. Oh that. yeah, man. I've been like jumping around crazy and screaming like some of the breakers do, you know. <laughs> but but yeah, it's a cool card, man. Congrats to whoever got it. I I think it's probably worth it. Um, let's just hope that she can have a good year this year that's what i'm hoping for i mean i i really want her to do well i really do i have nothing against her whatsoever but it just seems like she's caught up in so many wrecks yeah no we i'm we all want her to do well i think it, it helps the hobby it helps bring in new fans i think it helps a lot more beneficial than you know than hating on her so yeah i mean imagine if she was to win an Xfinity Series race. Oh my God. I'm, I'm getting chill bumps just thinking about something like that because that would be, it would be unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it'd be your, it, be a, uh, you know, history making. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, I, you probably can't see it, but yeah, I, I've got, I literally have chill bumps thinking about something like that happening because I just think it would be incredible. But that's, that's all we have for this week's King's Court. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the All Chronicles version of king's court for the 2023 chronicles well thank you all right i think that's all we got for this episode again uh, i'd like to thank misha for joining us today and logan thanks for uh king's court yep and we uh, appreciate you watching and listening to the show yeah um hashtag slab fire hashtag skid marks hashtag rchof and Ty freaking Gibbs. That's awesome. All right. So for me, Logan, we appreciate everybody watching and listening to the show. If you like the show, uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you really like the show, subscribe and uh, leave a comment or subscribe. We'll give you a shout out at the next show. So let's see my computer be locked up. All right. Here, come on. <laughs> it's working over time. <laughs> Oh, uh, gotta love technology. Yeah. So while we're talking real quick, if anybody notices the timer, it's currently under an hour. So it's a new track. <laughs> there you go. All right. We're out of here. <laughs>